Consider the lilies, they don't toil nor spin. And there's not a king with more splendor than them. Consider the sparrow, they don't plant no sow. But they're fed by the master who watches them grow. And we have a heavenly Father above with eyes full of mercy and a heart full of love. And he really cares when your head is bowed low. Consider the lilies, and then you will know we have a heavenly Father above with eyes full of mercy and a heart full of love and he really cares when your head is bowed low consider the lilies and then you will know may i introduce you to this friend of mine who hangs out the stars and tells the sun when to shine he kisses the flowers each morning with dew but he's never too busy to care about you and we have a heavenly father above with eyes full of mercy and a heart filled with love and he really cares when your head is bowed low consider the lilies and then you we have a heavenly father above with eyes full of mercy and a heart filled with love and he really cares when your head is bowed low consider the lilies and then you will know yes he really cares when your head is bowed low consider the lilies and then you will know hallelujah praise the lord sometimes that's all we got to do we can look at nature itself and understand that god loves us praise god I know you ever think about oxygen? I never think about oxygen. Hallelujah. I just uh, breathe in and breathe out. Hallelujah. And then sometimes I think about it and I realize that's all you, God. Hallelujah. In him, the, Bi the Bible says, in him we live and breathe and have our being. So I'm thankful today for everything he is to me. I know you are too. Praise God. Uh, as we stand this morning. I'm done singing, Sister Patsy. Thank you. We stand one more time briefly just for the word of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. <coughs> we used to uh, stand and sit down and stand and sit down and stand and sit down a lot in services. Uh, I remember as a kid, uh, I thought, about a 12-year-old boy, I said, why well, is there a lot of standing and sitting and a lot of standing and sitting? I say, Pentecost has its ups and downs. <laughs> I don't know. That's a 12-year-old boy thinking. But Matthew chapter 10, 
three verses out of that chapter, 29 through 31. Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 through 31. says, Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. Not one. Verse 30, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Some of us wouldn't take much math to figure out how much hair is on our head. It's, it's evident today as you're looking this way. But others, <laughs> it would take quite a bit of time and effort, like Brother Carter. But fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Hallelujah. Did you get that this morning? And in Luke chapter 12, this portion of Scripture is a little different. And to me, I found it interesting. And in preparing the message this morning, I asked Brother Google what a farthing was. And Brother Google answered and said, that would be three-eighths of a penny. A farthing is three-eighths of a penny, not even half a penny. If I see a penny on the floor at work, I pick it up. I don't leave them sitting around, whether it's heads or tails. Some say, heads up, that's good luck. But I just pick it up, heads or tails. But I don't leave them laying there. But not even half a penny for a farthing. And the book of Matthew told us, what did it say? Two sparrows are sold for one farthing. Two sparrows you get for less than half a penny. Luke chapter 12 and verse 6, and watch the wording here. We'll read verses 6 and 7. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthing? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Not one of them. Verse 7, but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Five are sold for two farthings. So if my math is correct, that is six-eighths of a penny, or when you break that down, you reduce it. They called it in school when I went there. It was three-quarters of a penny. But at six-eighths of a penny, I want to preach to you this morning about sparrow number five. Sparrow number five. Would you pray with me again this morning? God, we're so thankful again, Lord, that you are here. I know, God, that you're here. I wouldn't be here today if you weren't here. We would have all went home. I'm so thankful, Lord, that I know where two or three are gathered together in your name. I, you are with us, Lord. You are in our midst today, and we're here in your name this morning. I thank you for your goodness and your kindness, and your mercy today is everlasting in my life. You've poured it out on my, me time and time again this morning. Help us in this service this morning, God. Anoint my mind to talk to us today, God. Speak to us, Lord. Anoint the hearts of your people to receive your precious word today. Hallelujah. Help me, O oh God, to be an encouragement to somebody this morning. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. I know you're able this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. It's that fifth sparrow I want to speak to you about. You wouldn't have to be a, a great and powerful entrepreneur to be involved with sparrows. I may have mispronounced that, but I'm country boy, Sister Mandy. But can I tell you that Bill Gates and Donald Trump would not be interested in dealing with sparrows? I mean, when you can get a couple of sparrows for three-eighths of a cent, and then what you do with them, I wouldn't have a clue. Maybe you can get one to talk and sit on your shoulder outside of Walmart. As people walk by, would say, can you sparrow a dollar? Can you sparrow a dollar? I doubt it, but I don't think they'd be good to eat. I don't think they'd be good tasting. Maybe with a little salt and pepper, I don't know, but for sure. But ain't going to cost you much. Three-eighths of a penny, and that'll get you two sparrows. Three-eighths of a penny will get you two sparrows. And here in Luke chapter 12, here's where I thought it was interesting. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. It said, Fear not, therefore, you have more value than many sparrows. Now, wording is in both of these passages. It looks to me that in this bargain here, 
If you could buy two sparrows for just one farthing in the book of Matthew, and then in the book of Luke, you've got five sparrows that are sold for two farthings. That seemed like some interesting math to me. Sounds like sparrow number five was just thrown in there to sweeten the deal. You ever try to, to, to uh, be something or try to, do, try to uh, get in a deal there? Get popular, I guess, with your neighbor. <laughs> My neighbor growing up, he had a bunch of marbles in a box, and we decided we started trading. Uh, we'd trade marbles. We'd trade baseball cards and, and when I was a kid. But uh, tell him my age with that marble deal but dad was a dealer and I can remember his greenhouse and folks would stop and buy his plants and he had several different kinds of plants maybe you'd get two tomato plants for 50 cents I don't remember how much he sold them for but it wasn't much I'm just throwing a price out there because I can't remember what he'd sell them for but he would there he was he had maybe one over here in the corner he could sweeten the deal for people People would walk around there carrying a couple of tomato plants, and they'd be there after a while, and Dad's watching them, you know, and they, they couldn't talk to him because he couldn't hear, but he's watching them walk around the greenhouse with those couple of tomato plants. They'd go back over and look, you know, at a couple more. They're debating on whether or not to get more tomato plants, and Dad, being the salesman that he was, maybe got that last dollar out of their wallet, and Dad was after that last dollar to get two more tomato plants. But Dad would grow those plants from seed, so he got them for a little bit of nothing. He was always glad to get a few dollars off of those customers. And Dad would say, and I'm not quoting, just paraphrasing, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you'll buy these four tomato plants that you just set down here in front of me, this tomato plant sitting over here, I've had to put some extra water on it. The leaves are kind of hanging down, and it's turning a little bit yellower than the other ones. But I'll just throw that one in for a bargain. You can have that. I'll just throw that in to sweeten the deal. So if you'll take these four for $2, I'll just throw this other plant in there. It ain't going to cost you nothing. It ain't going to cost you a dime. I'm going to put this extra plant in on the deal. And then that's one sweet deal. And he'd probably say, like Sister Mandy, are you happy? Are you happy? Sister Mandy and I went to a, a yard sale yesterday. Just by chance, it was sitting there. I said, let's go. First one we've ever been to this year. And the guy would, when we got the stuff and put them up there, and he, he dropped the price on some stuff. They had very high prices. But they dropped it down to yard sale prices. And the guy said, we just want you to be happy. Are you happy? I said, yeah, I'm happy. He goes, well, good. I said, yeah, I was happy when I got here or before I got here. But, but uh, anyway. But, uh, yeah, but he'd throw that in there to sweeten the deal. And the plant wasn't worth much in itself just being thrown in there again, to sweeten the deal. But what that plant did accomplish was it caused the customer to settle on four plants and not leave with just two. And in settling on four plants, the customer walked away with five. God, in our scripture setting this morning, is using this economy lesson, really, I think, to tell us something. He said, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, over here in Matthew is just two sparrows for a farthing, three-eighths of a penny. But I've got four sparrows here in the book of Luke that are really worth six-eighths of a penny. But if you'll take the deal, I'll give you this fifth sparrow. And really what he's saying is this sparrow in the economy is really not worth very much. I'm going to throw this fifth sparrow in to sweeten up the deal. If you'll take it for two farthings or six-eighths of a penny, well, praise God. And this fifth sparrow that really, according to this deal, is not worth anything. You're not getting anything for this sparrow. The deal is being cut with these four, and this fifth sparrow is just being thrown in. It's got a lopsided head. Its leg is broke, and I've had it around a while. It don't get around very often. I'm just going to throw this fifth sparrow in. And by the time he gets to the bird feed, all the, all the feed is gone. He can't get around with that bum leg. But to sweeten up a deal, you can have it. I'm going to throw it in there. God is saying... God is saying this morning, not one of them is forgotten before God. Not a one of them. And God not only is interested in the four that is in the deal, but the, this fifth sparrow that got thrown in that really don't have any value at all is valuable to God. And I've come to talk to somebody this morning that may have come into this house today feeling like you're that fifth sparrow. You're feeling like you're that extra sparrow that got thrown in the deal. Amen. Just to sweeten it up. 
But God said, I want you to know that you're valuable to me. You may not be valuable to your family. You may not be valuable to your community. You may not be valuable to those you work around. You may not be valuable to your friends. But God is letting somebody know this morning that you are valuable to me. Not one sparrow can fall to the ground without my notice. I want you to know God knows your name this morning. He knows where you're at today. You're not without value to God, but you're rather you're very valuable to Him. If you're just that fifth sparrow this morning that got thrown in on the deal, you've been a hell raiser, but somehow today you found yourself in the church. You found yourself at an altar. You found yourself full of the Holy Ghost. I don't know how it happened, Brother Rick. All of my family was worth the deal, but I just, spent, oh, I just wound up being that fifth sparrow that got thrown in the lot. God said that extra sparrow that got tossed in the deal is as valuable as the ones that he had made the bargain for. I've come to tell somebody in the house this morning, you're worth something to God. You're worth something to God. Hallelujah. You're worth something to heaven today. Calvary tells us that he paid the supreme sacrifice for whosoever will. Let him come and drink from the fountains of the water of life freely for that fifth sparrow today. I'm going, to read, I'm going to read you some scriptures that I've never heard anybody preach from. I'm going to slaughter the king's English with pronunciation when I read them to you. I'm going to make a mess out of them. I, I, that's a given. That's, that's a promise. But they're, they're not here. These people that are in scripture, they're not here, so it ain't going to bother them. They're not alive. They ain't going to know the difference. They ain't going to, they ain't going to roll over in the grave or anything. But in the 16th chapter of the book of Romans, and in verse 5, I'm going to try to tie this together if the Lord will help me today. Romans chapter 16 and verses 5 through 15, but I'm not going to read all of them. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Eponidas, who is the firstfruits of Achaia unto Christ. Verse 6, greet Mary. We don't know which Mary that is, who has bestowed much labor on us. And verse 7, salute Adronicus and Junia my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners who are of note who were of note among the apostles didn't say they were apostles it said they were known among the apostles who also were in Christ before me verse 8 greet amplius my beloved in the lord 9 salute urbane our helper in christ and statius my beloved salute apellus approved in christ salute them which are of aristobulus household Salute Herodian, my kinsman. Greet them that be of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord. Salute Trophina and Trophosa. I always say if there's young ladies hunting for names for their kids, there you go. Who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Salute Ascentritus, Phlegon, Hermas. Petrobus, Hermes, and the brethren which are with them. Salute Philologus and Julia, Nerus and his sister, and Olympus and all the saints which are with them. I don't know who these folks are. Does anybody know today? I don't know what they've done. I ain't got a clue who they are. But the Apostle Paul, writing to the church in Rome, they meant enough to him. Amen. They meant enough to him. You can't find them in the pages of history. Their time on earth is done. There's no record of them. We don't know who they are. We don't know what they've done, what they were involved in. But you know what they are? Amen. They are the fifth sparrow. Praise God. They wasn't Paul. They wasn't Silas. They wasn't Andrew. They wasn't Mark. They wasn't John. They wasn't Luke. But God knew who they were. Amen. Paul knew who they were. Glory to God. There's no filler words or names in the Word of God today. I believe that with all of my heart. There's probably some saints that are in the graveyards today that nobody's ever going to know their name. And in time over the years, the rain and all the water over the years and the seasons of melting and freezing on that headstone, the elements will wash their names off of the tombstone. Sister Mandy and I have seen that with a graveyard just up the house from us. The dates and the names on the headstones are difficult to read. And a lot of them are like that in that particular graveyard. Hallelujah. Difficult to read. 
But let me remind somebody, all there'll be is a faded picture in somebody's picture book when the gravestone is faded. I remind you today, God don't forget who you are. He don't forget folks that show up in the church house faithfully when the doors are open. He don't forget folks who faithfully support our streaming services with an amen on the keyboard. Hallelujah. You can't make it out to the house of God. We understand that. Hallelujah. Enjoy the services. That's a blessing to you, and that's a blessing to us. God doesn't forget those that make their way to the house of God through the rain and the sleet and the snow. And he don't forget folks that are part of God's church today that keeps the lights on. Hallelujah. I'm thankful the lights are on today. And in the winter time, I'm thankful that the furnace is lit. Praise God. There's a fire going. Praise God. Keeps the prayer room occupied. We got a prayer room today right here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Half an hour before service, we keep the prayer rooms occupied. Amen. They may not know much about them in India or Australia, but let me tell you again this morning, God knows where that fifth sparrow is. I feel someone needs to hear it today. You're valuable to God. He knows who you are. Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Praise the Lord. Let's look at these this morning. Colossians 4 and 7 is Tychus. Tychus. Colossians 4, 9 through 12. And I'm just going to say the name Onesimus. Eris, whoever he. Marcus. Jesus, which is called Justice, amen, and Apparas, and on, on down. Verse 14, he talks about Luke. He greets Demas here, and Demas hits the road by the time he gets to Timothy. So just because folks were good yesterday don't mean they're good today. Did you get that? You're only going to count if you hang in there. You're only going to count if you hold fast to your faith until the end. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Revelation 3 and 11, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Praise God. I don't want no man to take my crown today. Praise God. Hold fast. It's going to be worth it all someday. Praise God. Don't follow Demas. Don't follow Demas who forsook the man of God. He was mentioned with these others having loved the present world. By the time he got to Timothy, he was gone. Lots of unknown names to us today in Scripture. We've covered some of them. There are others today. We don't know who they are. We don't know what they've done. All we know is their names are in our Bible. In 2023, their names are in your Bible today. They counted to God. That's what that tells me. They counted to God. I don't know what they did, but God knew who they were, and he knew what they did, and they were faithful to God. Praise God. I'm so glad we didn't live in that day. Can you imagine calling your kids' names in from outside, some of those names? I certainly have nicknames for them. But God knew who they were, praise the Lord. They were faithful to God, praise the Lord. You know what they were today? They were that fifth sparrow. They were that fifth sparrow. You don't find stories about them in Scripture. They weren't mentioned. Uh, the Apostle Paul said, greet them. He mentioned them in his book to Rome. They were valuable to God. Their names today are included in the pages of the Holy Word of God. Someone needs to look up to heaven today and say, God, you know me. You know where I'm at. You know me. You know where I'm at. Remember Job? Job was going through all that he went through, everything that he went through. And in the end, hallelujah, it was turned when Job began to pray for his friends. Praise God. God knew all the time everything that Job was going through. I'll say it again this morning. Maybe you'll remember it. We ain't got a clue who these people were. We ain't got a clue. But I got a hunch they were that fifth sparrow. Praise God. We don't, I don't know what they've done. They were valuable. Uh, they were valuable to God. The fifth sparrow. And not one, the Bible says, not even the fifth one. Not one can fall to the ground without his notice. His eye today is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. He knows you today. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1. Isaiah 43 and verse 1 says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, 
And he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. I'm not sure, but I've been told that 365 times in your Bible, it says fear not. That's for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, January and June and July and October and December and all the days and the months that I skipped, every one of them, 365 days, 366 next year, the Lord willing. You're not supposed to fear. Fear not. You belong to God. Fear not. I have called thee by thy name. Jesus knows your name. I get forgetful sometimes, and sometimes I say, Hey, you, uh, praise the Lord, because I can't remember everybody's name. Hey, you. I may call you brother or sister because I can't think of your name, but you know what? Today he never stumbles. He knows your name. He never stutters. He never shakes his head. He never has to write down a note. Sister Mandy knows that I don't like writing notes. Oh, she thinks I love writing notes. Stacks of notes, yes, notes, write a note. He's saying to you today, thou art mine. I come to tell somebody today, you are somebody. You may be just that fifth sparrow that was thrown in the lot to sweeten a deal today, but God knows who you are. He knows where you are. He knows what you are, and you're valuable to God. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, when thou passest through the waters, you're going to pass through the waters. That's what that tells me. Those first words tell me you're going to pass through the waters. He didn't say if you pass through the waters. He says you're going to pass through the waters. He said when I will be with thee. When the water's coming up, he's with you. He don't desert you when the water's coming. He don't desert you when the floods come. He don't desert you when the stress comes or the de-stress. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. I don't care what you're facing in life. It's not going to take you down. You may feel like you're that fifth sparrow. It's not going to take you down. Well, I know God hears sister, this, sister so-and-so. I know uh, God hears brother so-and-so's prayers. They're closer to God than I am. And they've been around longer to the house of God. So they've got to have been growing closer to God by now than I am. Uh, you're not feeling much about yourself. You're just feeling about you like you're that fifth sparrow. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you, you're a child of God today. His eye is on you and his hand is on you. When thou walkest through the fire, you're going to walk through the fire. Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. It ain't going to destroy you. You're going to make it. Praise God. You're going to make it. Somebody should say, I'm going to make it. Hallelujah. You're going to make it. Glory to God. I don't know what you're going through this morning. You may be that fifth sparrow. Can't sing, can't play music. Too embarrassed to testify. I don't feel real good in my body. I'm backward when I witness. I just don't feel very valuable to God's kingdom. But you may be that fifth sparrow that got thrown in to sweeten up the deal. But God says you're valuable. You know what God is saying? Well, I wouldn't have took the deal. I wouldn't have took the deal on just the fourth sparrow. The reason I took the deal was because the fifth sparrow was thrown in there. Praise God. Can somebody raise your hands this morning and just love him. I love you, Jesus. I'm thankful today. I'm thankful today. Thank you for including me today, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good to me. Hallelujah. What love you have for me today. Those folks we spoke of in Scripture this morning, those folks that we have no clue who they are, they meant enough to Paul. He's writing to these people in Rome, and he's down there in Philippi or somewhere, and he's writing in Rome. We don't know who these people are, but they meant enough to Paul that he included them in his letter. Some of them probably were that fifth sparrow that really wouldn't count, but they counted to who mattered. We've got faithful saints here in Elizabeth, faithful to the house of God, faithful to the things of God, faithful in prayer and fasting and studying the word of God, faithful to the man of God, 
It's an honor to be counted among you today. I feel it's an honor. I'm thankful for your prayers, your sensitivity to the Holy Ghost today. The people that received Paul's letter in Rome really thought these were some important people to be included in Paul's letter to them. I want you to know today you're important. You're important today. If you come in here this morning and you felt like you wasn't important and you're just a guy hanging in the back, you're with us today. You've got a hope of heaven today. You've got hope of salvation today. You're not less in God's eye than into the next man or the next woman. Praise God. And I'm closing this morning. Sister Patsy, would you come to the keyboard again? Praise God. You're important today in God's kingdom. If you're that fifth sparrow that I'm speaking to today, that God had a word for you today to let you know that you're important, I want you to know that God cares for you and he loves you. Praise God. Sparrow number five. I'm so glad I got counted this morning. Anybody else feel that way? Praise God. He didn't have to include me. He didn't have to count me, but he did. Praise God. If we stand this morning, I'm going to ask you to come for a season of prayer before we leave this morning, but listen to this passage of Scripture here before you come. If you can't make it to the front or if you feel more comfortable to pray where you're at, that's good, but listen to this. Malachi chapter 3 and verses 16 and 17 says, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Verse 17 says, And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. You ain't a clodhopper to God. You ain't a dirt bag to God today. You ain't a rock laying in the parking lot to God today, but you're one of God's jewels. You're one of God's jewels. And one of these days, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. There's jewels in some of those caskets. I really believe today that there's jewels laying inside of those caskets. We've got loved ones that have passed on to their reward. Others may have looked at them like they were that fifth sparrow, not worth anything. They dressed up in a suit and tie all the time. They always wore dresses. Uh, went to a church, went to church a lot, sometimes four times a week. Didn't seem very popular to me, but you know what? Before God's eyes, they were jewels. And let me tell you what really matters. What really matters when you draw your last breath is what God has to say about you. Hallelujah. Verse Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 4 Verses 16 through 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Praise God. Comfort one another with these words. He's going to call his jewels home. In fact, they're going to see him before we that are alive and remain will see him. They're going first. Hallelujah. They're going first. Praise God. Hallelujah. They're already in his presence. They're already in his presence. Praise God. They're already there. But let's pray today. Let's find a place of prayer. You matter to God today. He loves you today with an everlasting love. He cares about you and what's going on in your life. All you got to do is give your life to Him because He laid His life down for you. Let's all find a place to pray. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful, Lord. I'm so thankful today, Jesus.